Coming up tonight on Sports Corner, Jim Christian and the Golden Flashes jump in the AP Top 25 after a win over St. Mary's. Kent State's golf team struggles in Puerto Rico, and James and I share our feelings on the NBA's top trade. Plus, Kent State senior forward Mike Scott joins us in studio to talk about last weekend's big West Coast win. Stay tuned. Sports Corner begins right now. Welcome sports fans to episode number two of Sports Corner, Kent State Student Produced Sports Recap Show. I'm your host, John Sable, alongside my partner, James Buckley. Coming up in the next half hour, all the latest news on Kent State's move into the top 25. Our Sports Corner Pick'em panel will decide who has the upper hand in Thursday's Big East matchup. And James and I will debate the good and bad of the, all the NBA's latest trades. Plus, Mike Scott, like we said, joins us to talk about how the team is reacting to the win and how they are preparing for the rest of of the season but first let's go back to Saturday what could be one of the biggest victories in school history a nationally televised game against the 23rd best team in the nation Kent State was up to the challenge as we see let's go to the highlights last Saturday televised on ESPN 2 the game started 9 o'clock on the West Coast which was actually midnight I stayed up for it I it was, was at like, the bar you were at the bar we all watched the game we all watched Kent State come out very strong Al Fisher was a beast in this game starting off early with a layup and the foul one of one of many plays for from Al the entire night Hugh running down the lane that's ridiculous look at that dunk able to posterize the Gales all of a sudden Kent State coming out making a statement in the first half but later on the Gales showing why they're nationally ranked Diamond Simpson with a big dunk down the middle 23-24, but later on they would finish the second half with a huge 14-2 run, including a nice three-point play by Simpson there. Acrobatic play indeed. Great job, and Mike Scott with the two-shot, not a three, but able later in the second half, only down by one, Mike McKee. You gotta be loving it, that one. You gotta be loving it. And Al Fisher, two of his 28 points on the night, pretty much single-handedly in the second half, led this Kent State Golden Flashes team to a win. 65-57, bracket buster game, big time upset on the West Coast. And as we saw Monday afternoon, the coaches poll and the Exciting AP news. poll came out. First time in Kent State history in the regular season that they were ranked. They're number 23 in the AP, 24 in the coaches. Big, big time for Kent State. Yeah, first MAC team to get into the poll since Ball State back in 2000, 2001. So good news for Kent State. Hopefully in the next three games here they can keep that up. And they weren't the only team playing on Saturday, No, they weren't, John. James. The women were playing their cross-town rival Akron at the MAC on Saturday. Pick this game up here in the first half. Kent State up by one. Here's Jessica DeVille. Kicks out the Keela Snowden for way downtown. That's NBA range, James. Yeah, that was all the way from Akron. Snowden hit five threes in the entire game, but Kent State coming back here as DeVille is going to find Rachel Bennett. Wrong team. She's going to go coast to coast and find one of the reserve players, Alyssa Brinkman, who had 12 points off the bench, including this nice little layup right here. It was a good game yeah. throughout the entire, entire game of it. Second half, here we go. Ashley Harkins <laughs> hits the three. Kent State up 63-62. And then final play right here. Snowden with six seconds. Tries for the desperation three. Couldn't happen. Bennett would no then good. grab the ball, run the time on the clock. Kent State wins 65-62. Yeah, 65-62. Shields, double-double, 15 points and 10 rebounds. Well, after a tournament low, 287, the Lady Flashes golf team ended up shooting a 301 today, which dropped them from first to a tie for third in the Lady Puerto Rico Classic. Senior Kara Meixner finished with her second top 10 finish in as many weeks with a three overall through three days. The number 14th ranked Golden Flashes finished ahead of five top 20 teams, including number five Florida State, six Arkansas, number 10 Georgia, number 11 Purdue, and number 12 Tennessee. Kent State's next tournament is March 7th through the 9th in the Texas A&M Memorial Invitational. Now let's send it over to Drew for a look at this week's top athlete on campus. Drew, who you got? Well, thanks, James and John. Well, you know it's Al Fisher. Congratulations. You are the Kent State's Athlete of the Week. The junior guard scored 28 points a season and game high, added four assists, and shot 9 of 10 from the free throw line. The Flashes are enjoying a week off before traveling to Bowling Green, where they play the, where they play the Falcons this Saturday. Tip off the set for 1230. Still to come on Sports Corner, playing for pride, Bob Lindsay's squad finished a season sweep of Akron, but can they beat the number two team in the MAC East? And on Sports Corner Pick, our, our Sports Corner Pick'em crew, including yours truly, will share their thoughts on the game. And up next, the one and only Mike Scott with John and James. Stay tuned. You're watching Sports Corner on TV2. Welcome back to Sports Corner. We are now joined by senior forward and Sports Corner favorite Mike Scott. Mike, thanks so much for joining with us tonight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mike, real quick, talk about going on the road to California to take on St. Mary's and having it in the national spotlight being a national televised game. I mean, we, we've definitely been in that position before, so uh, it wasn't nothing too new to us. You know, we knew it was going to be a challenge, and uh, we just came together and 
before the game. We knew that we could really get it, mm -hmm. and uh, so we went out there and did what we had to do. You know, you you, you watch the you, can, you saw the polls came out. You both ranked in both the coach and the AP. First, I want to get your reaction to being ranked nationally ranked, and how does it feel? You know, once you're getting that national recognition. Right. Well, I mean, I I, I feel like you know. It's just a number when it comes down to it. You know, we can't change. We can't get cocky about it. You know, we still have a job to do. I mean, I feel like they've given us a spot in the tournament, but, you know, we can do nothing but give it back right now. So we have to uh, just stay consistent and do what we have to do. Mike, well, talk about getting 20 wins in 10 consecutive seasons. This is something that the program and the athletic department has been you know, preaching all year and promoting. Mm -hmm. Talk a bit about that. I know we talked about that earlier in the semester or we talked about previewing it, but talk about what that means for Kent State. Uh, like, like I said before, I said this beginning, the very, very beginning of the year, uh, it's a recruiting tool. You know, I mean, it, it got me to come here. <laughs> it was, I think it was about seven at the time or six maybe. And um, it's great. It's just tradition. I know it's only a few teams in the country that have done that, and it's just great to be a part of that. I want to talk about Al Fisher in particular, one of your teammates. You know, I, about a month ago, if you were to ask me if he would be able to carry a team, carry the team like he did against St. Mary's, I would have probably said probably not. But he's right. mature. Talk about his maturity and able to actually lead the team to a big victory. Uh, he, he's a great point guard. And uh, the thing I really commend um, Al Fisher about is how he listens. And he really takes uh, constructive criticism very, very well. At the beginning of the year, we were on him about his turnovers, things like that. Mm -hmm. And he just, you know, he slowly but surely corrected him. You know, he, he still has little issues with that. But, you know, we're all growing. We all have our little shortcomings as basketball players. And he just really listens. He's, he's become a great point guard for us. Mike, you and Q are the only seniors on this team. Talk about the senior leadership that you've done to help this team and what you're going to have to do to continue on. Well, it, it really started from the first three years I was here. You know, that's something that Coach really preaches. He, he puts a lot of stock into his seniors. You know, if things go wrong, it's the seniors' fault. If things go right, it's the seniors' fault. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it's just really good. And I learned from Youngblood, you know, Kevin Warzynski, Dre, uh, Jason Edwin. Mm -hmm. it, it's been great. We know the Max Center is one of the toughest places to play in the mm -hmm. Mid-American Conference. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are undefeated at home this year. I mean, how big of an advantage is that for you when you have, you know, 5,000, 6,000 screaming fans uh, all on your side? Oh, most definitely. It's great. I mean, the little chance and things like that definitely get you going because it's very difficult to play on the road. And so when you're going home, it's like a relief. You know, you have the crowd behind you. You don't have to worry about negative chance or anything creeping into your head negative. The crowd, when they see you down, they lift you up. You know, and they, it's great to have them behind you, definitely. Um, compared to the team that went so far and won the MAC championship two years ago, you know, you guys seem to be doing down the same path. What are the strengths from this team that maybe uh, were your weaknesses a couple years ago? Do you see uh, any similarities or differences between the two teams? Uh, we definitely have that senior leadership again. You know, Q, I feel like me and Q are really um, uh, doing our job. You know, and then we have guys who are following and really listening. You know, because I've been here a while, so I know the, the ropes around the Kent State basketball team. And so just like that sophomore year, we had a lot of seniors. And uh, from that senior leadership, that's how we made it so far. Uh, Mike, talk about how you guys try not to look ahead. You guys only have three regular season games left, but, you know, you have the Mac Trinity coming up. But even though you've had this big game and you're, you know, having a successful season, how hard is it not to try to look ahead? Well, personally, I don't think it's very hard. I mean, because if, if we happen to lose, um, go out there Saturday and not play our game and lose, then... I mean, the game last Saturday was almost for nothing in a way, you know, so we have to uh, definitely just uh, stay locked down, stay level-minded, grounded, mm -hmm. and handle our business one game at a time. What was the turning point of this season that you guys knew you had something special going on? Uh, probably the game after Ball State. I think uh, we, we all met uh, after Ball State because Ball State, that was a, a difficult game. We all had some issues with that. We all talked, and then um, after that, we uh, definitely got it together. Well, uh, Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Good okay. luck in the rest of the season here and, and uh, going on the MAC tournament. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, Mike, if you want to stick around, we're going to have a little debate segment and excuse you. Yeah, sure, um, sure. We'll be right back with uh, more from Mike Scott and Lindsey Petruna, who will join us next. Stay tuned. Sports Corner continues.